pounding. Carolinas with torrential rain and gusty winds almost two days since it made landfall near Wrightsville Beach. Widespread flooding is being reported throughout much of North Carolina. At least 12 people have died. More than a million homes are without power. Hundreds of homes have been destroyed and officials fear the worst may not be over yet. We'll have live coverage from the hardest hit spots coming up. But first, here's a look at the catastrophic storm as it came ashore yesterday morning. We have days of rain ahead of us. That means more rivers will rise in flood communities. The backside of the storm just refuses to break. We're seeing very strong winds coming in right up the ocean, the rain coming in in sheets sideways. This wind is still strong enough to break off parts of the houses along the beach. Get everybody out of there. Wilmington, North Carolina, took a direct hit from Florence, and that's where we find Rick Leventhal. What's the latest there, Rick? Well, Jesse, it was. Uh we had a lull in the rain until just about five minutes ago. It started coming down again. We're expecting another one of those heavy squalls to blow through here. Uh, Wilmington is in the dark tonight. They've been able to restore some power, but not to this historic district, which we'll pan off and show you uh, one of these dark streets, which are littered with down trees. We'll show you some of that uh, in just a minute. But first, I wanted to tell you about an unfortunate situation here earlier uh, that we drove up on, which was uh, some people taking advantage of the storm by looting a dollar store uh, just a few minutes from this beautiful neighborhood there were folks going into that store and walking out with armfuls of stuff that they didn't pay for uh, the wilmington police actually put out a tweet saying that they weren't going after the looters because the store had asked them not to but after that happened uh, and after a lot of people started getting pretty upset about the whole situation the police did move in and we're told they've made at least uh, half a dozen arrests so we got that going on. We also have some pretty bad destruction, as I mentioned, around here. Uh, this neighborhood, the historic district, littered with downed trees now, Jesse, including one area that looked like it was hit by a twister where uh, a roof was ripped off and the debris littering the street in front of it. And then just down from there, a massive tree ripped up by the roots with uh, the sidewalk all torn up around it and then wow. we could see a block down the road where more trees were splintered clearly there was something that touched down and blew through that area and this entire area uh has seen a lot of trees come down just like that big old trees and and clark hip and susan dillard have been living in this neighborhood for more than 30 years and they're sitting in two of the most comfortable chairs we've ever sat in uh <laughs> that i guess were your grandmother grandma bessie's chairs so <laughs> So thanks to Grandma Betsy. I'm sure you thank her every day you sit oh, in that yeah. chair. But you guys were here riding out the storm. Right. Uh, there was no mandatory evacuation order here. Uh, but describe for me what that night was like. So we've been here over 30 years. We've been through quite a few storms. And this was certainly one of the, one of the roughest we've been through. Uh, the wind was very heavy. The rain was very heavy. Uh, our house is over 100 years old. Uh, but it still shook, and you could you could feel the the power of the storm. Yeah, uh, it, it's got to it's got to tear you up to look around and see all those beautiful old trees that have just toppled down, littering in the streets around you. I, I've told several people recently through tweets that um, downtown will never be the same. Uh, it's going to take another fifty to seventy five years for these trees to grow back. Um, I'm really sad for for what we've lost uh in the trees and not just trees uh jesse clark is an architect you were working on restoring an old right. brick building it was yeah. built uh the early 1900s 1919 right? uh it was on castle street and uh the historic wilmington foundation uh decided to undertake rehabilitating it um and unfortunately it didn't make it through the storm yeah so. the brick just toppled it, it was uh, it was amazing 
Yeah. Um, and you're still in love with this town, obviously. You're not going anywhere. Oh, we're not going anywhere. We, we've never left for a storm. Um, we did uh, think about it when it was a Category 4. Yeah. Um, but to be quite honest, if this is a Category 1, we'll have to think doubly hard next time. Well, there um, you go. It, it was a tough one. Thank you, Clark. Thank um, you. you. This was... Uh, it, it was fortunate for all the folks down here, Jesse, that it wasn't a stronger storm, which they thought it might be. Right. But that said... Uh, as you reported, the floodwaters are going to cause massive problems across the state, not just here on the east, but across the state. Well, the next, Clark and uh, Susan are brave souls for sticking around. I definitely would have skedaddled out of there. Uh, I don't know how they had the courage to do that, and it looks like they're okay. I can't believe the police sent out yeah. that tweet about the looting and saying that they're not going to prosecute looters. Yeah. That seems like an open invitation to loot. And in North Carolina, when you do loot during a natural disaster or a state of emergency, they jack that up to a felony. So they're going to be doing hard time what, if they catch these people. So hopefully they do. Well, what the police tweeted out initially was we're aware of the looting. Unfortunately, management has asked not to intervene at this time. So they were saying that the dollar store was telling them don't arrest anybody. We're OK with it, basically. And this is just a small situation. The rest of... I believe the area in and around those parts that were hit. No one's looting. Everybody's, you know, not misbehaving. So this is a one-off, and well, uh, hopefully this lady I, gets popped for that because that's just awful. Well, I did hear of another example in Wrightsville Beach where we rode out the hurricane, where it made a direct hit, that someone, uh, possibly some kind of contractor, had talked their way in with a residence pass and then was going in and breaking into houses. The town was deserted. Wow. And... I, I believe they caught this person Good. because I was given some information about him. Good. But, you know, that stuff does go on. And they're obviously it does. You know, and, and, you know, the authorities here. have to come down hard on these people because you got to make an example of them. All right, yeah. Rick, great job down there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jesse. New Bern has seen some of the worst flooding from Florence. And that's where Leland Vitter joins us from now. All right, Leland, what's the latest? Uh, Jesse, you and I talked on Thursday during the five. It was raining then. It is still raining now. It has not stopped. In New Bern and where we have been in Moorhead City and Atlantic Beach, this storm has really brought out the very best in people. The neighborhood behind me uh, flooded over the past couple of days, and it was hundreds of volunteers who showed up here with their own boats. I talked to one guy from Pittsburgh who brought his boat down to be able to rescue people. This morning, they pulled 70 people out of the homes here. Somebody who knows a lot about this neighborhood, Rex Bennett, grew up on this street. His mom's house is flooded. Mom's not going back home, right? Absolutely not. Uh, the devastation has just been too much, and she's uh, said I, she's just done with it. And this is pretty cool in terms of what what this storm brings out in terms of the very best of people. We have some pictures to show you of Rex's business. Rex is a funeral director, and he opened up the funeral home when you heard about all these people being rescued. Tell me what happened. How many people you got staying there now? Uh, well, during the height of it, I mean, we had about 20 people there, uh, including uh, people that were rescued, and then my family as well. Uh, who was just uh, sheltering there to take care of things while the storm was going on. Um, but, uh, you know, we heard about some people that were in trouble uh, through Facebook, and uh, they were friends of ours. Um, of course, we just began to be uh, praying. Uh, but uh, after that, you know, uh, found out they were safe and they had no place to go, I said, bring them on. Rex, what makes North Carolina so special is we were down earlier today off the coast in Beaufort. We saw guys heading out in their own boats, 40 knot winds, trying to check on people, rescue people that were cut off and trapped. Here we've got people opening up their, their businesses and their homes to complete strangers. What, what makes this place so special? What's well, different? you know, here in North Carolina, I think you said it earlier, you know, people don't ask for a lot of help, but we just pull together and get things done. Where where does this go from here? And so our viewers understand we're on the very far eastern part of North Carolina. As this storm moves west, there's going to be a lot more neighborhoods just like this. Absolutely. Um, there's a lot of people west of here uh, that are already starting to experience uh, the inland flooding as the waters move down through the tributaries and the rivers trying to get back down to the coast. And so um, I've just learned that uh, Craven County, where we're at, um, is already uh, landlocked all the roads in and out uh, to the west and north and south of us are uh, covered by water. What, what does that mean? What's it like in town right now? We look around, it's, it's pitch black. Uh, how are supplies? Gas is tough to find. How about groceries, that kind of stuff? 
There are a few places in town that are open, um, but the few places that are, the lines are excessively long. I, I passed by one gas station uh, when we came out to check on mom's house earlier, and I mean, the line, you know, was just stretched for as far as you could see almost uh, in both directions. So um, people are just clamoring to try to get yeah. as much uh, supplies as they can. And all right, so Leland, tell Rex that what, I what are the silver linings he, for newborn Jesse? Yeah, hold, tell Rex I cannot believe he opened the funeral home up for these people. It must have been a surreal experience to ride out a deadly storm in a funeral home. But I guess you got to do yeah. what you got to do. And Leland, great reporting down there. Stay safe and uh, take care. While North Carolina bore the brunt of the storm, its neighbor to the south is seeing some devastating effects, too. Joining me now from Florence, South Carolina, is Ellison Barber. All right, what's going on down there in South Carolina? Hey, Jesse. So we've had a much easier couple days than the guys have. The rain here really didn't come in until yesterday afternoon. And you can see right now it's relatively light. Right now there was an evacuation order for Florence, South Carolina, but officials lifted that earlier today. There is still a curfew in place. It's supposed to go in to effect at 8 o'clock, but you can see there are still some people out and about. The big concern uh, for officials here, of course, is the rain and the potential for flooding. And the biggest worry right now is about an hour and a half away from us in Horry County. That's Georgetown, South Carolina, near the water. There, officials, emergency officials say that they are working on two temporary flooding structures to try and keep a highway into that county open. The evacuation orders there are still in effect. Here, though, people seem to be spending a lot of time at this Waffle House. Uh, this Waffle House has been open for the past couple of days. We talked to one worker who said she's been working from 6 a.m. into the night for the last uh, couple of of days. They're about to close right now, and the only reason is because of that curfew. So uh, Waffle House, a lot of people have been talking about the last couple of days. There's this thing they call the Waffle House Index. Back in 2011, FEMA officials started using it since Waffle House are all over the place and usually open 24 hours. They said they could see if a Waffle House was open, full menu or partial. This one obviously still open. We've tried to get people to talk to us tonight. For the most part, they're <laughs> passing because they are worried about that curfew. But officials are saying even though things are light here right now, people do really still need to be careful and they're urging people to stay inside. But I mean, when you need eggs, I guess you need eggs. Right. Jesse. And uh, I guess a Waffle House is better than a funeral home. <laughs> Ellison, thank you very better, much yeah. and stay safe <laughs> down bad. there. All right. Diamond and Silk are riding out the storm in North Carolina, and we're gonna be checking in with them a little bit later. But next, porn lawyer Michael Avenetti gets crushed, crushed by Tucker Carlson. Right back. The newspaper clearly attempting to blame the president for the hurricane before the hurricane. The reason, Trump pulled out of the Paris climate deal. Now, here's a fact for the Washington Post. In 2017, Donald Trump's first year in office, the United States led the world in CO2 reductions. Look at that. While China and India and Canada and the EU, they're just emitting like crazy, we're reducing. Speaking of hurricanes, President Trump tweeted this about the death toll in Puerto Rico from last year's storms. 3,000 people did not die in Coast Guard member assisting with hurricane rescues was accused of flashing a white power sign. See right there? He says he was simply scratching his head. Now, who knows what's going on? But here are some other famous people holding up what could look like white power signs. Kanye West. President Barack Obama. Definitely white power there. And President Bill Clinton. Got to be a white power symbol. Unbelievable. The New York Times showing their liberal bias, printing a headline that falsely accused UN Ambassador Nikki Haley of charging taxpayers more than $52,000 for curtains in her house. The headline read, Nikki Haley's view of New York is priceless. Her curtains, $52,701. The problem is, Haley had no say in the curtain purchase. The money was put aside by the State Department in 2016 during the Obama administration. The New York Times issued a correction that was in very small print in the way back of the paper the next day that no one saw. Last but not least, President Trump's infamous fist pump 
on September 11th en route to the Shanksville Memorial. Now, this is what you saw the liberal media play. Trump fist bumping as he walked along the tarmac. The media apoplectic that he would fist bump on 9-11. Now, what you didn't see, Trump hugging a young cancer patient. When he left, gave the fist bump. It had nothing to do with his reaction to the September 11th anniversary. Before we get to the real news, let's get a reaction from former campaign manager of Donald Trump, Corey Lewandowski. All right, Corey, what did you think of that run we just did there? I mean, a really bad week for the news media. Yeah, but Jesse, the American people are so smart. They've seen this time and time again Especially since Donald Trump me. has we're been the, elected we're so to smart, office. Corey. Well, look, well, well, that's actually true. But, you know, it's amazing because just look at one of the stories. The Nikki Haley story, the ambassador to the United Nations, had absolutely nothing to do with the purchase of the curtains in her residence right. that was under the Obama administration. And what we saw was they put a nice big picture of Nikki Haley up on the New York Times website and in the New York Times newspaper to say that it was her fault originally. And then the apology was on page A97 <laughs> in the smallest of possible font. Right. And they said, whoops, actually, we don't want to actually tell you what really took place, that Nikki Haley had nothing to do with it. The American people have seen this time and time and time again. I, and that's why the mainstream media has no credibility anymore. And I the mean, American this, people this know happens this. so much when you think about what happened during the Kavanaugh hearings with the fake news, with that regard, with the handshake, the white power symbol. I mean, if they're going to lie about some guy going like this or scratching his ear and calling a, a white power uh, propagandist, what else are they doing that they're not getting caught doing? It's unbelievable. Um, but now, like you said, it's par for the course. You really believe the regular people see through this stuff? Because I think a lot of this stuff just comes at people in waves and they don't really pay attention, especially to the correction. Well, I, I think they see through it. And you remember, look, there was a woman sitting behind Brett Kavanaugh during the committee hearing who also supposedly flashed the white power right. symbol, the same symbol that yeah. Barack Obama flashed and everybody else did. And look, yeah, I Kanye guess, Jesse, you, 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 you can't scratch your head anymore. If you scratch your head, now you've done something wrong. There's no more scratching of heads no, no, on television. No, I never no scratch my head anyway because I always know the right Jesse, answer. <laughs> if you scratch your head, all of a sudden you're a white supremacist, I guess. I it's, unbelievable it's, a, it's unbelievable how all egregious right. the media is. I know. It's, it's insane. Now, listen, let's get to some real news, and then we're going to get your reaction to that. It's been a very violent week for the so-called tolerant left. A man tried to stab a Republican congressional candidate with a knife in California. Here's how candidate Rudy Peters described what happened. We hear somebody screaming, F you. Donald Trump, F you, Donald Trump. We, we kind of look up from the table. He's got his middle finger extended. The next thing we know, he stops, turns around, and says, I'll show you. And he pretty much bum rushes the table. He picks up the coffee cup, rears back, throws it at us, misses it, hits the ground, breaks us. I grab him, throw him to the ground. I don't strike him. I don't even fall on top of him. And uh, he jumps immediately up, reaches in his pocket, pulls out a knife, and he's got it over his head. And he's screaming, I'm going to kill you, mf -er. I'm going to kill you. So he's, he's dancing in a circle, and I can see his thumb trying to get the blade. He's pushing on the button to try to get the blade to come out. Wow. Farzad Faseli was arrested and charged with felony assault. And by the way, there was almost no coverage of this blatant act of political violence by any of the networks, cable news, Washington Post, or New York Times. Speaking of hate, a Republican Party office in Wyoming caught fire last week. Arson is now suspected, and police believe it was politically motivated. A Make America Great Again sign was hanging in the window that was broken. And crazy Maxine Waters added again, telling supporters that she enjoys, enjoys threatening Trump supporters. Well, sort of. Listen. Of course, the line president said that I had threatened all of his constituents. I did not <laughs> threaten his constituents, his supporters. Uh, I do that all the time, but I didn't do it that time. <laughs> and, uh, but what bothered me so much was they tried to frame that as violence. Mm -hmm. 
Um, that's not violence, I said, if you see him anywhere. <laughs> if you see him at a restaurant. If you see him in a department store. Even at a gasoline station. Just tell him you're not welcome here or anywhere. <laughs> And former Trump campaign advisor George Papadopoulos said he's willing to testify before the Senate Intelligence Committee about all he knows. He told Sean Hannity he still believes he was set up by spies who wanted to incriminate Donald Trump. I meet this professor randomly in Italy who he presents himself as some sort of high-level connected figure to both European governments and to the Russian government. All of a sudden, he introduces me to a girl who he calls Putin's niece. She's not Putin's niece. I don't know who this person was. He then can't introduce me to even the Russian ambassador. One day, out of the blue, he drops his bomb on me about emails. I have no idea what he was, you know, where he got this, this information from. He said he was coming back from Russia. I never saw emails. He never told me where the emails were. He just dropped his bomb on me and then he just went his own way. So I don't know what his purpose was. It was incredibly shady. Now for some good news of the week. President Trump signed an executive order slapping sanctions on any foreign country, including Russia, who tried to interfere in U.S. elections. Now, that didn't get much play. Trump tough on Russia. I wonder why. North Korea celebrated its 70th anniversary earlier this week, and for the first time, there were no nuclear weapons on hand. Instead, the missiles usually on display were replaced with floats and flowers. Certainly, President Trump deserves credit for their change in behavior and propaganda. Hopefully, we'll see more progress on the peninsula soon. Good news also on the economic front. Blue-collar wages way up, and manufacturing activity is near record highs. And last week, former President Barack Obama tried, tried, taking credit for the robust economy. But the chairman of the Council on Economic Advisors, Kevin Hassett, sees it another way. This is employment for uh, people in goods producing industries. Uh, if you look again at the blue part on the left, you can see that there's a clear downward trend uh, going on in the growth rate of that uh, for President Obama. And then a clear inflection time to almost precisely once again at the election. And the notion, again, that somebody might uh, defensively attempt to assert that this is a continuation of the trend is almost laughable. And by the way, if you watch this news conference, every chart he holds up, it's going down. Barack Obama, Trump's elected, goes up. You can't argue with the facts. And finally, we couldn't end this real news segment without Tucker Carlson's takedown of Stormy Daniels' attorney, Michael Avenatti. Here's a taste. When's the last time you saw porn? Oh, you busted me. Actually, I'm into humiliation time? porn. No, That's no, why I watch you on CNN. No, no. You're wearing a thousand dollar suit. Why is sh you? Why are you not paying her? You've profited from Stormy Daniels. Why is it that her life has stalled, and your life has? You're planning a new career as a politician, and like so many lawyers, you are taking advantage of her. And you pose as a feminist hero because you are shameless, and the other channels let you get away with it. But you're an exploiter of a woman, and you should be ashamed of it. All right, Corey, before we get to that, let me set this up for you. Maxine Waters comes out and says she threatens Trump supporters all the time and encourages people to get up in people's faces if they disagree with them. The same week, you have a guy try to stab a Republican congressman. I'm not saying Maxine made this guy do it. This guy did it himself. But is there a correlation? These people are trafficking in a lot of violent rhetoric. Well, Jesse, as you know, the Democratic Party has no new ideas. So what they want to do is they want to incite some type of rhetoric and violence potentially against the Republican establishment, against those Republican candidates. And this notion that it's OK to stab somebody or that that hasn't been covered by the mainstream media. Not at all. Is I mean, a barely covered at all. Imagine if a, a Trump supporter started yelling something about crooked Hillary and tried to stab a Democratic congressperson. You didn't think that wouldn't make the nightly news at all? I mean, it's crazy. Now, real quick, Avenetti Tucker, is Avenetti going to be able to come back from this? Look, I want Avenetti to run for office. I want him to run for president. He's a failed attorney. As we all know, his law firm has been sued many, many times, and he's owed millions of dollars. I think Tucker's takedown of Avenetti is exactly what the American people want to see. <laughs> maybe so Avenetti, let's see more of Avenetti. Maybe Avenetti and Waters. 
With one T, not me. Avenetti, Maxine Waters, that's the ticket. All right, Corey, thanks again. That'd be great. Thank you. Up next, is John Kerry going to prison? We'll tell you what that's all about next. I'm Robert Gray. Florence slamming the Carolinas with torrential rains, intense winds, and life-threatening storm surge. As fears of catastrophic flooding grow, thousands have been forced from their homes, and many don't know when they can get back to survey the damage. Well, everything in our house will be ruined, I would imagine. It's just stuff. You know, we're, we're safe. Our lives are here. You know, it's just stuff. It'll be replaced. Despair. Uh, but, you know, what can you do? I mean, there's really nothing. It, until this goes away, we can't do anything about it. At least 11 people have died so far as crews rush to rescue people trapped by fast-moving floodwaters. Some areas have already been hit with up to two feet of rain, and forecasters predict another foot and a half is likely over the weekend. Back to the show. Former Secretary of Administration, after admitting that he has met with Iranian officials three to four times since leaving office, reportedly trying to save the nuke deal and telling America's enemy to wait out the Trump presidency until a Democrat is in office. Wow. Here's Kerry on The Daily Briefing with Dana Perino. When I met with the Iranians, the policy of the United States was still to be in the Iran deal because the president had not decided and had not pulled out. Mm -hmm. Secondly, every secretary of state, former secretary of state, continues to meet with foreign leaders, goes to security, security conferences, goes yes. around the world. We all do that. And we have conversations with people about the state of affairs in the world in order to understand them. Mm -hmm. We don't negotiate. We're not involved in interfering with policy, but we certainly have reasonable discussions about mm -hmm nuclear weapons, the world, right. and you have China, views. different policies, uh, obviously. The White House blasting John Kerry. Here's Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on Friday. What Secretary Kerry has done is unseemly and unprecedented. This is a former Secretary of State engaged with the world's largest state sponsor of terror. And according to him, right? I don't, you have to take my word for it. He, these are his answers. He was, he was talking to them. He was telling them to wait out this administration. It's inconsistent with what the foreign policy of the United States is, as directed by this president. And it is beyond inappropriate for him to be engaged. With me now, Fox News Chief National Correspondent Ed Henry. And the president says this is an illegal act. There's the Logan Act. Very, you know, long uh, ago law, very rarely uh, enforced, uh, that basically says you cannot negotiate with foreign governments and undermine the American government. Do I think John Kerry's going to go to jail? No, it's not going to be enforced. Well, they hit Mike Flynn pretty hard on that, they, didn't they? They hit him on that. He didn't, that's not what he got in trouble but that's for, what but they, they raised it with. as an issue, and you're right. right. So there's hypocrisy by Democrats. Here's John Kerry's problem. Mike Pompeo quoted him, which is that he told Dana Perino, wait, you know, I told the Iranians and others, wait out. Donald Trump. So, yes, he's right that former secretaries like Henry Kissinger, they've been given speeches and having meetings for years, for years and years. But what's different is that he's trying to undermine the current administration. By the way, he went on Bill Maher, I think, last night and said that the President Trump is has the insecurity of a teenage girl. <laughs> I'm waiting for Madonna and others to call that out as sexist. Have another women's march. Right. Get the pink hats. And go after fall John Kerry. Didn't bicycle or something like yeah, that? And as break Secretary his arm. of State. Yeah. But, but I did that when I was a teenager. Be consistent so. and go after a Democrat once in a while. All right. New Paige Strzok text that mm -hmm. broke this week. These are pretty big. Here's Strzok saying, quote, I had literally just gone to find this phone to tell you I want to talk to you about media leak strategy with the DOJ before you go. There it is. And then Strzok to Paige saying, next, article is out. Well done, Paige. Atta boy. <laughs> Come on. Way to go. Here's the problem. Uh, 
Peter Strzok's attorney uh, is saying this was a media leak strategy to stop leaks. Oh, to stop yeah, leaks? Yeah, try to help Donald Trump, maybe. Oh, so they're Come congratulating on. them for Come not on. stopping now, the leak? <laughs> in fairness, there are other texts and there are examples where they were managing the information and saying, wait a second. Like, for example, I think there was a Washington Post story that said the FBI agreed with the CIA conclusion months and months ago that the Russians were out to help Donald Trump. And I believe I saw at least one text message where Strzok is saying, no. We don't agree with the CIA. That's BS. And so to his credit, he was trying to right. change something. But the bottom line is they were doing attaboys at the end of 2016. There were text messages saying there's all kinds of stories about Trump and all this. And we were right all over it. Congratulations. And, and we Come knew on. that they were leaking to the media and then using those media reports to justify the wire And they're anti-Trump stories. Exactly. And they're the investigators. They're supposed to be fair. Now, Kavanaugh really took it on the chin, blindsided by an attack from who? Diane Feinstein. Right. And Just what happened here? There, from an anonymous woman going back to high school. Big caveat. We don't know what else is going to come out this week. And so we don't, we know, don't know what, what we don't here. know. And if there's something there, it should be investigated. Bottom line, here's what we do know. Last minute, it's anonymous. It goes back to high school. Dianne Feinstein is under fire back home. She has a, a tough Senate re-election. The left is after her. She wants to please the left. And she had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Brett Kavanaugh and didn't raise it. Why, Why didn't she have the guts to say it? Here's the other thing. Keith Ellison, yep. he has an on-the-record allegation about him, yeah. about mistreating a woman. Double standard. Can you hear Diane Feinstein talk about that? All right, Ed, thank you very much. Up next, live from the center of the tropical storm, Diamond and Silk, everybody. Stick around. Your digestive system has billions of bacteria. Carolina's at the hour. Mandatory evacuations have been ordered for portions of Fayetteville, North Carolina. And that's where we find two of my favorite ladies, Diamond and Silk, who join me by phone. First of all, ladies, are you guys okay? And what is going on down there? Okay, so first of all, Diamond and Silk, we are okay. Yeah. However, yeah. we are being drenched and saturated with rain, and we're talking up to 15 to 20 inches in counting, and some counties all the way up to 40 inches, um, which is creating these rivers and cra creeks to rise and mm -hmm. floods, flood out roads and homes and community. Power lines are down. Trees are down. They even shut off parts of I-95. That's wow. been shut off. Curfews have been put in place. They're asking everyone to stay inside. So Hopefully by Monday, we're looking for these first responders and these crew members to go out, assess the damage, and start the cleanup process if all is well. Um, all right, so I'm glad you guys are respecting the curfew. That's a very smart decision that you guys are making. All right, so you're safe in the house, and is, are floodwaters, like, just drenching outside in the neighborhood? What, can you see out the window? What's going on? Give us we some color. We can see out the window. Now, the street that I stay on is not flooded, but I'm subject to go out to the main road, and it may be flooded out there. Trees may be down, or power lines may be down. Okay. Um, power is on and off. Uh, internet is sketchy. So it's just, this is just the, this is our reality here. Yeah, I see trees. I see trees down. I see limbs down. I've never, ever in my lifetime seen anything like this. Right. All and right. people are going to be displaced off of this storm. We're asking people to go to sistersnonprofit.org. People are going okay. to need help, and we got to help these people. Well, I'm glad you guys are okay, and I'm glad you guys weathered the storm and, uh, you know, gave us the opportunity to talk to you because we have some other topics that we want to talk to you guys about that besides the storm. I want to talk to you about Jim Carrey. Now, yeah. Jim Carrey comedian, was on Bill Maher's show the other day, and he was just raving about socialism. Listen to this. The Republicans are running with the word socialism. They're trying to They're say... They're trying to scare people. Scare to people. It's communism. I'm here to tell you that this line that you get on all of the political shows from people is that it's a failure. We just have to say yes to socialism, to the word and everything. I, I'm, we have to stop apologizing. I, I am... Now, ladies, it's so funny that he's praising socialism because a reporter from Venezuela just came out and says, Jim Carrey, socialism has destroyed our country. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, you know what? Since Jim Carrey is saying yes to socialism, why don't he say yes to giving away 90% of his earnings? As a matter of fact, we will need that 90% right here in North Carolina because it's going to be a lot of displaced people. That's then right. he can move to Venezuela and let him sit in suffering and poverty of socialism and then tell us how that's working for him. That's right. <laughs> All right, ladies, I'm glad you guys are okay. We have to run and uh, keep me posted. And uh, North Carolina... 
Hang in there. We will. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. The Obama administration accused of spying on the Trump campaign. Up next, an actual spy hunter enters Waters World to show me the tricks of the trade. A fingerprint scanner and a 20,000 volt security system. And this I am particularly proud of. The remote control for your car. Tap twice. One, two. It's been discovered that the Obama administration sent spies into the Trump campaign. Many believe their intentions were nefarious. Recently, I spoke with spy hunter and former FBI operative Eric O'Neill, who helped take down FBI double agent and Russian spy Robert Hansen. All right, so you got some uh, little goodies here. What do we have first? That's right. So if you're on the street and you're trying to catch a spy or you are a spy, you want to be able to change your appearance really quickly. And one thing you can do is change your face by putting on glasses. And the other thing that these glasses do is they allow me to see 10 feet further. I don't wear glasses, but they're like Wait, binoculars. these are like super zoomed in? A little bit, right. So if I'm driving and I want to catch a license plate or I got to see just a little <laughs> further, they help. The problem is if you wear them too long, you get a bit of a headache. All right, so those are super duper zoned in glasses that make you be able to see very far distances. That's right. And what is this? This is some sort of recording device? So this little guy, right here is this is the camera it's a pinhole camera and it has an audio recording it's like a centimeter big exactly that's a camera you can literally turn this on leave it behind and watch from around the corner down the street on your on your cell phone and see what's happening in a room or a watch who walks by an intersection and you're not there you're completely disappeared you can also build it into things and use them as leave behind. Oh, a leave behind. I like that idea. Yeah, exactly. So remember the Russian soccer ball that Vladimir Putin gifted to President exactly. Trump? Maybe it had one of those in there. He could, he could have stuck something in there, although I'm sure that anything that Putin gave Trump the second they walked out of that room, people were using countermeasures to find out if there was something. Yeah, there it is. I'm sure they swept that thing hard. All right, so you also have a hat and a jacket. What, what's the significance there? Exactly. So one of the best ways to change the profile of your face if you're on the the street is to put a hat on that's it. it completely changes the way you are especially if someone sees you from behind it changes your profile so if you put your hat on then you can pull it low and now you're not looking at my eyes and I look different yeah right? you do look a little the bit. other thing you could do is use a jacket and the one I like the ones that I like are easy to slip on easy to take off they're compressible so you can put them in a bag or a pocket and this one's cool because Seems pretty basic. It oh, reverse. Right. So now are, are these two. spies that dumb? You can really fool them with a little sometimes, outfit change. Sometimes the outfit change gives you that five seconds to take a turn without being seen that gets you away. All right, but what can't you change? The one thing, well, you take a guess. What can't you Your change? Your shoes. What's the one thing? Shoes. Nobody carries around two heavy pairs of shoes, especially men. I mean, our shoes are big and heavy. So All unless right. it's flip flops. Come over here for change. a second. All right. So we're gonna do something. You said this is how spies exchange information on the street so no one can detect them. What's this move? Right, so one of the best ways to exchange information, especially if you know you're gonna have surveillance and you wanna meet your asset, I'm a spy, you're my asset, is called a brush pass. It's a super fast spy maneuver to exchange information, hopefully without being seen and in a crowded- A fingerprint scanner and a 20,000 volt security system. And this I'm particularly proud of. The remote control for your car. Tap twice. One, two. It's been discovered that the Obama administration sent spies into the Trump campaign. Many believe their intentions were nefarious. Recently, I spoke with spy hunter and former FBI operative Eric O'Neill, who helped take down FBI double agent and Russian spy Robert Hansen. All right, so you got some uh, little goodies here. What do we have first? That's right. So if you're on the street and you're trying to catch a spy or you are a spy, you want to be able to change your appearance really quickly. And one thing you can do is change your face by putting on glasses. And the other thing that these glasses do is they allow me to see 10 feet further. I don't wear glasses, but they're like Wait, binoculars. these are like super zoomed in? A little bit, right. So if I'm driving and I want to catch a license plate or I got to see just a little <laughs> further, they help. The problem is if you 
wear them too long, you get a bit of a headache. All right, so those are super duper sewn in glasses that make you be able to see very far distances. That's right. And what is this? Is this some sort of recording device? So this little guy right here is, this is the camera. It's a pinhole camera and it has an audio recording. It's like a centimeter big. Exactly. That's a camera. You can literally turn this on, leave it behind and watch from around the corner down the street on your, on your cell phone and see what's happening in a room or a watch who walks by an intersection and you're not there, you're completely disappeared. You can also build it into things and use them as leave behinds. Oh, leave behinds. I like that idea. Yeah, exactly. So remember the Russian soccer ball that Vladimir Putin gifted to President exactly. Trump? Maybe it had one of those in there. He could, he could have stuck something in there, although I'm sure that anything that Putin gave Trump, the second they walked out of that room, people were using countermeasures to find out if there was something. Yeah, there, there it is. I'm sure they swept that thing hard. All right, so you also have a hat and a jacket. What, what's the significance there? Exactly. So one of the best ways to change the profile of your face if you're on the street is to put a hat on. That's it. It completely changes the way you are, especially if someone sees you from behind, it changes your profile. So if you put your hat on, then you can pull it low and now you're not looking at my eyes and I look different. Yeah, right? you do look a little. The bit. other thing you could do is use a jacket. And the one I like, the ones that I like are easy to slip on, easy to take off. They're compressible so you can put them in a bag or a pocket. And this one's cool because Seems pretty basic. It reverses. Oh, reverse. Right. So now are, are these two. spies that dumb? You can really fool them with a little sometimes, outfit change. Sometimes the outfit change gives you that five seconds to take a turn without being seen that gets you away. All right, but what can't you change? The one thing. Well, you take a guess. What can't you Your change? Your shoes. What's the one thing. Shoes. Nobody carries around two heavy pairs of shoes, especially men. I mean, our shoes are big and heavy. So All unless right. it's flip flops. Come over here for change. a second. All right. So we're gonna do something. You said this is how spies exchange information on the street so no one can detect them. What's this move? Right, so one of the best ways to exchange information, especially if you know you're gonna have surveillance and you wanna meet your asset, I'm a spy, you're my asset, is called a brush pass. It's a super fast spy maneuver to exchange information, hopefully without being seen. And in